These programs are distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. You may copy and distribute these programs free of charge. You may not sell them and you may not alter them. These programs are part of a study examining the value of podcasting as a medium for medical education. If this is the first time you are viewing a program in this optic series, send an email to jyoungmd at gmail.com with your name, position, institution, and city, state, or province, and country. Thanks, and enjoy the podcasts. This is a discussion of vertex correction for spherocylinders. And it used to be way back when I was a fellow, which I guess dates me, uh, an important issue because we would do what we call park treatments for photoastigmatic refractive keratectomy um, procedures with, with, the, with the XMER laser in which we would have to do the corrections for vertex distance. Um, it was not something that was calculated by the laser. So someone might come into the office with a refraction of minus 6 plus 5 axis 90. And we would need to correct that to find out what the treatment was that we were going to do at the corneal plane. So how do we approach this? Well, you know, minus 6 looks like it's greater than or equal to minus 4, which is our criteria, uh, our, our, our criterion for uh, needing to correct for vertex distance. Uh, plus 5, which is the cylinder, also looks like it's more. But, you know, if I were to transpose this into minus cylinder, then what would it be? It wouldn't be minus 6 plus 5 axis 90. It would be minus 1 minus 5 axis 180. And, you know, minus 1 doesn't look like it would need correction for vertex. So how do we figure this out? Well, the way that, that we do it is by using power crosses, by drawing out a total power cross. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our minus 6 plus 5 axis 90, and we're going to make the total power cross shown on the bottom of the screen here, which is minus 6 in the vertical and minus 1 in the horizontal, right? One of the arms is equal to the sphere. The other arm is equal to the sphere plus the cylinder. And then we're going to say, well, minus 6, that's something that I need to convert. And minus 1, that is something I do not need to convert because it's less than minus 4. We do our correction for the minus 6, right, no need to convert errors less than 4 diopters, that's what we just said. We do our correction for the minus 6, which is equal to minus 5.6. If we were prescribing uh, contact lenses, let's say that we were doing a, a correction for spherocylinder contact lenses, we would round the minus 5.6 to minus 5.5, that's close enough, and the refraction that we would get um, at the corneal plane from what was at the spectacle plane, minus 6 plus 5 axis 90, is going to be, let's look at the total power cross on the right, it's going to be minus 5.5 for the sphere. What's the, cylinder going, what's the cylinder going to be? The cylinder is the difference between the two. So the difference here is equal to plus 4.5. So it's going to be minus 5.5 plus 4.5 axis 90. Minus 5.5 plus 4.5. And again, the plus 4.5 is because that's the difference between the two arms of the new total power cross here. The difference between the minus 5.5 and minus 1.0 is plus 4.5. In order to get from this arm to that arm, we have to add plus 4.5 onto this. So it's going to be minus 5.5 plus 4.5 axis 90. Or it could be um, a minus 1, minus 4.5, axis 180. And those are equivalent descriptions. Remember, if you're doing it properly, you should be adding plus as you go from the spectacle plane to the contact lens plane or to the corneal plane. And uh, the mnemonic for that, not that you actually need one, is CAP for contacts add plus.